Hello, it's Maxine. Today I'm going to talk about my vegetarian, vegan, pescatarian, back to meat eater, back to pescatarian, and all up and down in between life ever since I think the ninth grade, which I was, uh, I turned, um, 15 halfway through the year, right? 13, 14, yeah. Anyway, so when I was 15, I had like always loved animals and I was always like a very picky meat eater. It was like the bones and the texture and like the veins and all of the <laughs> A very autistic trait, just not, you know, a lot of autistic people can't stand meat or they can't stand certain foods for certain reasons so I mean of course you could argue and say anybody is like that everyone has things that they don't like but I, you know coming from a, a family that was um like in poverty many a times due to my dad's gambling and drinking and smoking putting his needs above the household um you know I couldn't really like say no to everything if I said no then I would be going without so but I was saying no I just could not eat some of that stuff Ugh, like liver and well <laughs> anyway so but in the ninth grade I was introduced to uh some PETA videos like about animal cruelty some of those videos like <laughs> scarred me for life like but I mean rightfully so like everyone should be aware of what goes on like in factory farms like the way that I think about it now is like I have a huge respect for farmers and if they're like really treating the animals well and they're out on the pasture and they're actually eating grass and they're they're free in a sense like Back then I just was like completely against everything but as time went on I I have a huge respect for hunters as well as long as they're doing it for food and not for sport actually but um yeah just it's um yeah being vegetarian has and pescatarian vegan first I was vegetarian then I was vegan for about six months including I think my 16th birthday I had a vegan cake and vegan food and stuff uh, a vegan pizza but everyone else got regular and things like that <clears throat> and uh, I don't think I ever was that person who like forced it down anyone's throat <laughs> like I people gave me a really hard time in high school about it and including my mom like she'd always say well what are you eating salads like there's a lot more things you can make even being full vegan than just salads you can have pasta wraps sandwiches sushi um all types of beverages and <laughs> there's more to it than that. You can pretty much have anything nowadays. Like you can make burger substitutes. You can you can have all the sides people have, fries and stuff. And you know they even have like back when I was that age. Like so I'm 35 years old. <laughs> And so we're talking, oh my God, <laughs> how long ago, <laughs> 15, 20 years ago, <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, but back then the options that they had like for cheese and meat and ice cream and everything, I thought all was like disgusting, but at the same time. I don't buy that stuff too often these days anyways because I'm not supposed to be having soy and a lot of that stuff has soy in it. 
but they do have like coconut ice cream and all these other alternatives now and when when that beyond meat stuff first came out it used to like make me sick and some of my other vegetarian friends said the same thing but I don't know if our bodies just adjusted or if they changed the recipe but it's a lot better now <laughs> but uh so back to that um you know, it's much more than just animal welfare. Like in the beginning, it was mostly that, but then you learned about how it affects the environment and everything. And but yeah, there's so many reasons. I can't. I don't even know how many. Like there's. I have to do my, I should have done some research before making this video, but there's just so many reasons. And for your health and for everything. Um, the problem I had is I, when I was vegetarian, vegan, I think I did have a huge problem getting proper protein because I, you know, I was still living at home. I wasn't the one just like purchasing food for myself so back then I was still eating a lot of boxed food and per instant pierogi kind of things and I definitely was just getting still like carb overload and I was never like a big nut eater but during that time I found out about the South Beach diet and then I think I introduced fish back in I can't remember if the South Beach diet was before I became vegetarian or after but it was a really strict diet where it was like you know eggs and veggies for breakfast a cheese type of snack and then a salad for lunch and like fish and veggies for dinner and like it's it's not bad like I mean it's the way we're supposed to be eating really but it's just that that's where kind of all my eating disorders sort of developed because it was like so restrictive that when I wasn't following the diet or if I cheated, I like felt so much guilt that I, that's when I started like bulimia mildly. bulimia like at such a young age and that severe like guilt feeling it and like during development and everything it just like really warped my mind for a while like I uh I was just doing things that like I would never do today and never even imagine and um and yeah it was just uh tough time in my life and then I think I gained friends who had like a little bit more healthier eating habits because they were like athletes most of them in school so they helped influence me to like not continue on but with those habits but like it's like it's so twisted because it's like I wanted to look like them but then I also and I was active, but I was just bigger. Like there, there's nothing I could do to like, <clears throat> there's nothing much I could do to like be exactly like them. I had already from eighth grade to ninth grade, I went down from 230 or 35 all the way down to like 160. Then I kind of like slowly started creeping back up and I stayed around two or no, like 190-ish to 200 and 205. I was like always around there for like several years. There was a time in between that I like gained again and then I went back down. It's always been like a roller coaster, but my main weight in my adult life has been like 200, 205. Anyway, so, but, uh, <clears throat> I 
I definitely feel disorganized in my thoughts because I'm like, well, I'm talking about being vegetarian and I'm talking about eating disorders, but I kind of never really like realized the correlation till now because I was doing all these very extreme things at a young age. But um, I guess I can go back to vegetarian. So <coughs> um, I was never like a huge activist or anything. Uh, I just kind of took a lot of bullying for it and just didn't let it bother me and, um, you know, had to decline food a lot, like if I was at friends' places or whatever. So there is like a little guilt with that too, like when someone's offering you and you have to say no. So I think like probably pretty early on, I was mostly pescatarian, like I didn't really eat any other sort of fish besides maybe shrimp and sometimes cod like for dinner but tuna mainly like canned tuna which you know isn't very good for you it's like full of mercury and I think the recommended value you're supposed to get tuna like twice a month or something like that even to this day I have way more tuna than I'm supposed to have <laughs> but um oh what can you do when you have so many food sensitivities and you don't want to eat meat and you can't eat all these meat substitutes and you know you're like thinking of the environment and animals and your health and just do the best you can sometimes and something super messed up that I was thinking about recently is uh when I made that decision in the ninth grade to like do the South Beach diet and eat healthy, I was met with like so much like abuse from my dad and some of my like, because my dad was such a control freak, like abusive person, like he influenced my mom's opinions a lot. But, you know, my mom was the one who listened to me and like, bought this healthy food because like I said most of the time we were eating like canned things and instant things and just all processed shit so when I wanted to do this diet and like take care of my health and lose weight and stuff um But the fucked up part about that is my dad's making me feel bad about eating healthy, but he has no problem at all spending all the money on gambling at the casino, um, drinking, smoking, chain smoking. He had like a sweet tooth and he's diabetic and he's still bringing shit like donuts home and McDonald's and stuff and like suggesting me get pizza and stuff all the time. And it's just like, ugh. Like, I didn't ask to be here. I mean, I'm thankful to be alive today, but you're the one that decides to have kids and you're going to make your child feel bad for choices they want to make about their own body. Like, I mean, I dealt with a lot worse things than just food insecurity and starvation at times when there's only condiments in the fridge and you know, before, like, before the age of 11, when I started babysitting, and pretty much by the age of 11, like, my money was just going, like, rarely towards things for myself, whether that be, like, anything I want to, like, whatever, going to the movies with friends, whatever, but a lot of the time I was, like, feeding myself, whether it be lunch or after school with friends or, um, like, I just feel like early on, especially like having to get out of that abusive environment, like 
I didn't even explain the abuse, abuse in this video. It's it, too much for this video, but, uh, like, to leave the house at such a young age, like, completely unprepared financially, but I really had no choice. It was really, it felt like, stay and die, or, like, in regards to my safety or being so depressed and feeling suicidal a lot in my life like I had to leave at a young age and that just put me straight into poverty and I've pretty much been in poverty ever since because I mean I didn't have the know-how to save I didn't I've always just lived paycheck to paycheck I never I never had the knowledge to know how like of course like everyone knows oh just put a, like a little bit away every paycheck but there's always something that comes up then there's always like an emergency or vet bills or but most of all I wanted to have a life I wasn't put on the planet to like just living to work and have no life of course in my 20s when I was living on my own all those years I was still you know made time for friends and going out and eating out and drinking on occasion and concerts and all that stuff like I did live a good life but it's just that it's been poverty since the very beginning and I think finally at this age I'm like hopefully I'm gonna conquer it within the next couple years because what I started with was reducing living a minimal lifestyle like living in a trailer where I can only hold that many things I don't have an excess in anything I don't have an excess in clothing or shoes or movies or junk or art or makeup just n I got rid of all the stuff and I got rid of a lot of my collections so that's one thing to set me up for success and I've begun to get rid of some of my bad habits like with um <clears throat> just like eating out so much and daily drinks that like coffee drinks that are just so insanely expensive now like up to seven dollars sometimes for a freaking frap like it's ridiculous. so yeah this video is turning out to be a rant of many things from vegetarian to eating disorders to poverty to abuse to <laughs> what's next. Um, I'm using this uh, brow liner for a lip liner <laughs> since I don't have it right now. Just a little line because um, all I have is this really light lip balm right now, so it just it makes my lips disappear. The saddest part is that he would say things like, well, it's my money, my house. Like, so he can, he can gamble. He can, you know, chain smoke, drink. He can cheat on my mom and probably wine and dine his uh, mistresses, but he can't feed his child he brought into the world. Like they struggle to get pregnant too, which is like, but I turned out to be someone that he didn't want because I turned out to be someone who stood up for myself and saw everything that was wrong as a child and how we were just not prioritized and we were neglected and the things he was doing. That's why there was always like, it was like being in a war zone every day. Another thing I remember that I forgot about for quite a while was, um, well, like in the last year when I got, I can't really talk when you're doing that. In 
in the past year when I got diagnosed, um, I had to kind of like bring up these things to just sort of, I just felt like, I'm sure my site, my, uh, psychiatrist or psychologist didn't need every single detail of my life. Like, but I always just had to, I always just felt like my whole life when I was telling people about the abuse I was facing, they're saying like, yeah, well, you don't know like this and this and this. And it's like, okay, but when I'm just telling you, oh, my mom's, my dad's like abusive to me or yells at me or swears at me or this and that. Like, I didn't tell you that there was, like, forms of sexual abuse, many forms. I didn't tell you, like, details. <sighs> and threats of physical violence. And when you say something like, just hit me so I can claim self-defense. Like, I didn't even register that until, recent, like, just literally the other day that it wasn't just, oh, like, he could beat me. If I hit him first, he's saying that if he kills me, he can claim self-defense. Like, that's how fucked up it was. It's so fucked up that, like, my mind didn't, couldn't comprehend. Like, there was no way, I thought there was no way that that was happening. And the sexual abuse, too. I, like, in my mind, I was like, that happened to you as a child. There's no way that you're looking at me even though all the signs were there and grooming and compliments and all this inappropriate shit. But in my mind, I was just like, there's absolutely no way. Like he's a messed up person and he has all these problems and he's abusive towards me, but there's no way that he's sexually attracted to me. <sighs> but ugh, makes me feel fucking disgusting. makes me feel sad it makes me feel angry it makes me feel that I wasn't protected it makes me feel like I wasn't hurt it makes me feel like how the hell did I survive all those years like I have like a strength in me like all the other survivors like we just had to like we either barely made it didn't make it or we have like a fire in us that like will try to help others and like that's why I just have such a strong sense of justice I almost feel sometimes like a freaking superhero like when I'm out on the streets in everyday life if I'm witnessing things or in the workplace or in relationships anything I'm like not afraid to speak up for anything and it makes me look like a bitch it makes me look judgmental it makes me look like this and that well for someone who's been abused I see the patterns and Yep. Like, I know boys can get abused too, but girls are put, like, we're like the lowest form of human to, um, it seems, like, in countries around the world and... <sighs> You know, even though I like getting, I used to do a lot more, but I used to like getting dolled up, doing my makeup, having nice nails, heels at times on nights out, ma like, um, all these things. And yes, they're nice and they make you feel good, but in a really twisted way, a lot of these things, it kind of puts you in this way where you're like very vulnerable, vulnerable. Like, when I had my nails done, if you don't have them done all the time, it's like you can't really pick things up. You can't really do things as quickly as you could if you didn't have those. And the same goes for heels. Like, you... I mean, some girls get right in heels and whatever, but if you were, like, in a situation where you had to protect yourself from a predator or, like, certain things like that, like, your real nails are sharp like they can kind of defend yourself those fake nails are like so dull like they could do damage but nothing like your real nails just like things like that and uh like we poison ourselves with makeup with 
perfume and all the things we slather on our bodies to make ourselves smell good and dye our skin and it's just uh guys don't know how lucky they really have it <laughs> This is taking a dark turn, but I guess with the weather, it's making me... <laughs> I went from vegetarian to this, to this, to this. Well, that's usually how my videos go anyway, but... Um, I guess when I get on the topic of my dad, especially, that puts me in, like, a really negative space. And I, uh, have... I've been pretty good at keeping him out of my mind, like I said in one of my other videos... So right now I should do an exercise. First I gotta take a breath because I feel anxious talking about all that stuff and I hope I don't make anyone else who's watching my videos feel anxious or think of their trauma and their past. So first I'm gonna take some deep breaths. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that monster of a human being and I'm like literally locking him out of my mind. <laughs> so I'm not going to bring him up the rest of the video and hopefully I won't think about him until the next time I have to feel like I need to vent about a certain subject. But um, yeah, it's just... Uh, it's so complicated because a lot of what I struggle with now is that I love my mom and she's helped me with so much, but I don't feel like I was protected by her as a child and it does bother me to this day. And it, like some days, like I've been keeping my distance. We lived together from the year he died in 2016 all the way to just last summer. I believe, or last fall, not this past actually, like, um, the year before, so 2022, so it's quite a long time, like, even though we had our own space in the house, it was definitely difficult at times, like, I just, I definitely vented to her on a number of occasions, and there was also some forms of abuse with her, so it was, like, like, things I never put together I used to think like my dad was the devil and my mom was the angel when I was young because every single person loved my mom and told me how grave a person she was and then my dad was the complete opposite but it turns out like my dad warped my mom's mind so much that he just put us against each other and even though when the, my, one of the main reasons me and my dad had a problem, well, besides the things that he did to me directly, is once I got to a certain age, I was always speaking up and angry about what he was doing in the household, like blasting music till two on a school night or things like that, or like sh fat shaming my mom, putting my mom down. And I spoke up to defend her, but she never was there to defend me, not once, never spoke up against him when it came to me and like you could say well you don't know what he was doing to her well she claims to this day he never ever physically hurt her I mean he hurt hurt me but who knows maybe that's not my business even though he's been dead since 2016 maybe I still don't deserve the right to know but in my head well she's telling the truth he didn't hurt her he didn't threaten her so She just put him before me and my, I'm annoyed for another reason now. I just don't feel like getting into like just stupid text message, but like your children are not little toys. They're not little cute little things that you can just dress up and turn them into little mini yous. They're their own person. They have both parents' DNA, not just yours. You don't get to call all the shots. You don't get to be an abusive person just because the 
punishment nowadays is so minimal that people can just get away with anything nowadays. Like you can go steal something and get put back on the street the same day. Or you can, whatever. Like the punishment for crimes against children and women and it's just like little slaps on the wrist nowadays and it's just absolutely ridiculous but like your children deserve better like please don't bring children into the world if you can't commit to actually taking care of them and I'm sorry I know there's addiction out there and I don't mean to I'm not shaming people with like like, yes, my dad was an addict, so I'm, sh and I shame him, but there are addicts who are still good people, and there are addicts who just make mistakes, and then there's addicts who, like, refuse help, and that's not okay. It's not okay to refuse help. It's okay to refuse help if you're an addict, if you're not hurting people, but if you're hurting people close to you, and especially children who are vulnerable, and didn't ask to be put on this planet to be abused by their own parents. I'm just in a really bad mood now. Like it really pisses me off. It makes, sometimes I wish I could just like go to the edge of the sea right here that I'm at and just scream. Like I even, <sighs> what I was saying is, uh, I wish I'm running out of room so that's why I keep getting interrupted but I thought that I would like to host an event where people could just get together about all their problems they're facing whether it's relationships or work or financial or internal whatever it may be and we just all get together and we scream and <laughs> it's made public so that people know it's coming and they're not going to call the police because <laughs> Because sometimes we just all need to do that and not alarm everybody else. But, um, you know, one thing, you know, one thing I used to get a lot when I was younger, like as a teen, or maybe even to this day, is like, oh, you're negative, 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 negative. If you <laughs> lived my exact existence, every single moment from birth even like in the womb and to now tell me you'd be a positive person I think there's many of you out there who wouldn't have been able to survive sadly I'm sorry to say I just barely did and but with that um I just listened to this podcast like yesterday or the day before and like Anger, sadness, all of that is necessary to the human condition. It's like, we, it's helped us survive. Like, it's part of our survival. And we won't know happiness unless we face this stuff. But um, I just went on a little bit of a rant about... <sighs> you know, it's just sad. <clears throat> and it's really sad what people do to, like, gain likes and comments and to get get income like the way that they exploit their children online and I don't mind like if it's all cute and fun and comedy that's okay but there are like visible things in some of the shorts that I see or on TikTok or whatever that's like borderline abuse like when like I saw this lady talk about how her kids telling her what it wants like, I want this and this and this the second I wake up. And then she pulls off her shoe like she's going to beat the kid with it. And, and then, you know, and it gets like millions of likes and thousands of comments. Like, just so, child abuse is just so fucking normalized that it's okay. Child abuse is so normalized that that's okay. And that's not okay. Child abuse does not make your child respect you. It doesn't make your child go out into the world and become a better person. It makes your child resent you. It makes your child fearful of you. It gives your child low self-esteem. It gives your child um, the idea implanted into them at a young age that like that's the type of love they deserve and that's what they're going to go out and 
and get. So if your child, you're abusive to your child and they go out and get into an abusive relationship, like you have yourself to think. Anyway, <laughs> vegetarian to eating disorders to child abuse. Yes, this video has taken many turns, but like these are subjects that are important. It's just I need to going forward. I make a pro I'm making a promise to. Um, I have no room left. I just want to quickly say that I'm just gonna try to get more organized in my videos and pick certain subjects and write down the key points I'd like to make so that I don't go on tangents. But <sighs> yeah. But, um, yes, I'm going to get more organized. I'm going to do these videos better. I'm going to find specific topics. I'm going to have my certain points. I'm always going to go on tangents. It's just who I am. I'm always going to get off topic. That's just who I am. But I wanted to, this video was supposed to be about being vegetarian and vegan and eating meat again and going back to not eating meat and <laughs> so I'll have to save that for another day oh look my phone's actually letting me talk now how many seconds is it gonna give like I don't even have I used to have like 10,000 photos and videos or something like just a ridiculous amount and just over the years like not finding the time to delete everything I accumulated then I got rid of pretty much every single thing, and then I, um, I buy like 200 gigabytes of store extra iCloud storage a month. That is virtually useless because it, my phone won't let me access <laughs> more than what it has, which is like 